A village is a clustered human settlement or community, larger than a hamlet but smaller than a town, with a population ranging from a few hundred to a few thousand. Though often located in rural areas, the term urban village is also applied to certain urban neighborhoods. Villages are normally permanent, with fixed dwellings, however, transient villages can occur. Further, the dwellings of a village are fairly close to one another, not scattered broadly over the landscape, as a dispersed settlement. In the past, villages were a usual form of community for societies that practice subsistence agriculture, and also for some non-agricultural societies. In Great Britain, a hamlet earned the right to be called a village when it built a church. In many cultures, towns and cities were few, with only a small proportion of the population living in them. The Industrial Revolution attracted people in larger numbers to work in mills and factories. The concentration of people caused many villages to grow into towns and cities. This also enabled specialization of labor and crafts, and development of many trades. The trend of urbanization continues, though not always in connection with industrialization. Villages have been eclipsed in importance as units of human society and settlement. Although many patterns of village life have existed, the typical village was small, consisting of perhaps 5 to 30 families. Homes were situated together for sociability and defense, and land surrounding the living quarters was farmed. Traditional fishing villages were based on artisan fishing and located adjacent to fishing grounds. South Asia The soul of India lives in its villages, declared M. K. Gandhi at the beginning of 20th century. According to the 2011 census of India, 68.84% of Indians live in 640,867 different villages. The size of these villages varies considerably. 236,004 Indian villages have a population of fewer than 500, while 3,976 villages have a population of 10,000 plus. Most of the villages have their own temple, mosque, or church, depending on the local religious following. Central Asia AUYL is a Kazakh word meaning village in Kazakhstan. According to the 2009 census of Kazakhstan, 42.7% of Kazakhs live in 8,172 different villages. East Asia People's Republic of China In mainland China, villages are divisions under township ZH, or town ZH. Republic of China In the Republic of China, villages are divisions under townships or county-controlled cities. The village is called a Suan or Khan under a rural township and a Li under an urban township or a county-controlled city. See also Li. Japan South Korea Southeast Asia Thailand Brunei and Indonesia In Indonesia, depending on the principles they are administered, villages are called Desa or Kalurahan. A Desa is administered according to traditions and customary law, while a Kalurahan is administered along more modern principles. Desa are generally located in rural areas while Kalurahan are generally urban subdivisions. A village head is respectively called Kepala Adisa or Lura. Both are elected by the local community. Adisa or Kalurahan is the subdivision of a Kekamatan, in turn the subdivision of a Kibu Patan or Kota. The same general concept applies all over Indonesia. However, there is some variation among the vast numbers of Austronesian ethnic groups. For instance, in Bali villages have been created by grouping traditional hamlets or banjar, which constitute the basis of Balinese social life. In the Minangkabau country in West Sumatra province, traditional villages are called nagari. In some areas such as Tanatoraja, elders take turns watching over the village at a command post. As a general rule, Desa and Kalurahan are groupings of hamlets.
A kampung is defined today as a village in Brunei and Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. Kampung is a term used in Malaysia for a Malay hamlet or village in a Malay-speaking country. In Malaysia, a kampung is determined as a locality with 10,000 or fewer people. Since historical times, every Malay village came under the leadership of a pengalu, who has the power to hear civil matters in his village. A Malay village typically contains a masjid or surau, paddy fields and Malay houses on stilts. Malay and Indonesian villages practice the culture of helping one another as a community, which is better known as joint bearing of burdens. They are family-oriented, courtesy and practice belief in God as paramount to everything else. It is common to see a cemetery near the mosque. All Muslims in the Malay or Indonesian village want to be prayed for and to receive Allah's blessings in the afterlife. In Sarawak and East Kalimantan, some villages are called Long, primarily inhabited by the Orange ULU. Malaysian Kampung are found in Singapore, but there are few Kampung villages remaining, mostly on islands surrounding Singapore, such as Pulau Ubin. In the past, there were many Kampung villages in Singapore but development and urbanization have replaced them. The term Kampung, sometimes spelled Kampong, is one of many Malay words to have entered common usage in Malaysia and Singapore. Locally, the term is frequently used to refer to either one's hometown or a rural village, depending on context. Philippines In urban areas of the Philippines, the term village most commonly refers to private subdivisions, especially gated communities. These villages emerged in the mid-20th century and were initially the domain of elite urban dwellers. Those are common in major cities in the country and their residents have a wide range of income levels. Such villages may or may not correspond to administrative units and or be privately administered. Barangays more correspond to the villages of old times, and the chairman now settles administrative, intrapersonal, and political matters or polices the village, though with much less authority and respect than in Indonesia or Malaysia. Vietnam village, or Lang, is a basis of Vietnam society. Vietnam's village is the typical symbol of Asian agricultural production. Vietnam's village typically contains a village gate, Lui Tre, Din Lang, where Than Hoang is worshipped, a common well, Dong Lua, Chua, and houses of all families in the village. All the people in Vietnam's villages usually have a blood relationship. They are farmers who grow rice and have the same traditional handicraft. Vietnam's villages have an important role in society. It is common for Vietnamese villages to prefer to be buried in their village upon death. Central and Eastern Europe. Slavic countries Selo is a Slavic word meaning village in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, Macedonia, Russia, Serbia and Ukraine. For example, there are numerous Selo called Novo Selo in Bulgaria, Croatia, Montenegro and others in Serbia and Macedonia. Another Slavic word for a village is Vs. In Slovenia, the word selo is used for very small villages and in dialects. The Slovene word vas is used all over Slovenia. Bulgaria In Bulgaria, the different types of selo vary from a small selo of 5 to 30 families to one of several thousand people. According to a 2002 census, in that year there were 2,385,000 Bulgarian citizens living in settlements classified as villages. A 2004 human settlement profile on Bulgaria conducted by the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs stated that the most intensive is the migration city. city. Approximately 46% of all migrated people have changed their residence from one city to another. The share of the migration processes village city is significantly less 23% and city village 20%. The migration village village in 2002 is 
It also stated that the state of the environment in the small towns and villages is good apart from the low level of infrastructure. In Bulgaria, it is becoming popular to visit villages for the atmosphere, culture, crafts, hospitality of the people and the surrounding nature. This is called Selsky tourism, meaning village tourism. Russia in Russia, as of the 2010 census, 26.3% of the country's population lives in rural localities, down from 26.7% recorded in the 2002 census. Multiple types of rural localities exist, but the two most common are Derevnia and Selo. Historically, the formal indication of status was religious. A city had a cathedral, a cello had a church, while a derevnia had neither. The lowest administrative unit of the Russian Empire, a volost, or its Soviet or modern Russian successor, a cell Soviet, was typically headquartered in a cello and embraced a few neighboring villages. Most Russian rural localities have populations of fewer than 200 people, and the smaller places take the brunt of depopulation. E.g., in 1959, about one-half of Russia's rural population lived in villages of fewer than 500 people, while now less than one-third does. In the 1960s-1970s, the depopulation of the smaller villages was driven by the central planners' drive in order to get the farm workers out of smaller, prospectless hamlets and into the collective or state farms and main villages, with more amenities. Most Russian rural residents are involved in agricultural work, and it is very common for villages to produce their own food. As prosperous herbanites purchase village houses for their second homes, Russian villages sometimes are transformed into dacha settlements, used mostly for seasonal residents. The historically Cossack regions of southern Russia and parts of Ukraine, with their fertile soil and absence of serfdom, had a rather different pattern of settlement from central and northern Russia. While peasants of central Russia lived in a village around the Lord's Manor, a Cossack family often lived on its own farm, called Kuta. A number of such Kutas plus a central village made up the administrative unit with a center in a stanitsa. Such stanits ash often with a few thousand residents, were usually larger than a typical cello in central Russia. The term all AAL is used to refer mostly Muslim populated villages in Caucasus and ideal Ural, without regard to the number of residents. Ukraine in Ukraine, a village, known locally as a cello, is considered the lowest administrative unit. Villages may have an individual administration or a joint administration, combining two or more villages. Villages may also be under the jurisdiction of a city council or town council administration. There is, however, another smaller type of settlement which is designated in Ukrainian as a selisha. This type of community is generally referred to in English as a settlement. In comparison with an urban type settlement, Ukrainian legislation does not have a concrete definition or a criterion to differentiate such settlements from villages. They represent a type of a small rural locality that might have once been a kutia, a fisherman's settlement, or a dacha. They are administered by a silrada located in a nearby adjacent village. Sometimes the term selisha is also used in a more general way to refer to adjacent settlements near a bigger city, including urban type settlements and or villages. However, ambiguity is often avoided in connection with urbanized settlements by referring to them using the three letter abbreviation SMT instead. The Kutia and Stanitsha are not part of the administrative division any longer, primarily due to collectivization. Kutiers were very small rural localities consisting of just few housing units and were sort of individual farms. They became really popular during the Stoli Pine reform in the early 20th century. During the collectivization, however, residents of such settlements were usually declared to be Kulik and had all the property confiscated and distributed to others without any compensation. The Stanitsa likewise has not survived as an administrative term. The Stanitsa was a type of a collective community that could include one or more settlements such as villages, kutiers, and others. 
Today, Stanitsa type formations have only survived in Cuban where Ukrainians were resettled during the time of the Russian Empire.